Lloyd Smith has spent a large part of his life being converted as a teacher and as a debate coach. Mark Twain once said, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just isn't so. That's certainly true in politics. And there's no better illustration than the way the common core educational standards have become an issue in the presidential campaign. The project said the researcher topic from the competent communication manual, Lloyd Smith, will explain what the common core standard, standards are and what they are not, so that you can judge what the candidates are claiming about them. Lloyd Smith and the common core, the common core, Lloyd Smith. Common core state educational standards are a simple, real-world solution to a complicated, real-world problem. It's extremely weird that they have become a major issue in the presidential campaign. We're likely to hear a lot about them. My goal tonight is to tell you what these things are, where they came from, why they're important, and that will allow you to make your own decision about what these people are saying about these standards. First, the common core standards are just exactly that. They're common because they're common to all of the states. They're core because they relate to the two core academic subjects, reading and math. And they're standards because they're ways to measure what kids are learning. Now, they're based on something that you may not know. It's a, a weird thing. The United States is the only advanced country on Earth that does not have a national school system. In fact, by federal law, the federal government in the U.S. is forbidden to operate the schools. And so we have 50 different state systems. But the reality is even worse than that, because in about half of the 50 states, the individual school districts have a large degree of autonomy. So we really have about 2,000 separate school systems inside the U.S. Now, that's where the real world problem comes up. Suppose you have a job to offer somebody or a position in a college, an acceptance to a college, and you have a kid from Oklahoma, a kid from New Jersey, and a kid from Washington State. There isn't any way for you to know what those kids have actually studied in school unless you delve into their individual school district or state standards. And it's worse than that because if you have a kid, say, from Ephrata, a kid from Eastmont, a kid from Wenatchee, they all have grade 10 English on their transcripts, you don't have any way to know what they actually studied in that class, even though the name of the class is the same. Now that became an issue back in 1996 when the U.S. Chamber of Commerce sent a delegation to a meeting of the National Governors Association, which that year was chaired by Governor Jeb Bush of Florida. And the chamber complained that this was becoming a national issue because they had a hard time analyzing, I guess you'd say, what their job applicants knew or understood. That made sense to the National Governors Association, so they invited the Association of School State Officers, and that would be like the superintendent of public instruction in each state, to get involved in this too. So the Governors Association and the School Superintendents Association thought about this for a little bit, and they decided, okay, we need to figure out what's going on. So they appointed a commission and told the commission, figure out what the problem is and suggest a bunch of solutions and we'll pick one. And that, that was in 1996. In 2004, the commission finally reported to the Governor's Association and said the problem is there's no coordination. And the number one solution would be to have somebody, some experts, figure out a group of standards that every kid should be meeting at, say, at the end of every grade level. And the Governor's Association said, okay, and so they and the School Superintendents Association created a private company, a nonprofit private company, and that company hired a group of subject area experts to work on the Common Core. Now they had guidelines. They weren't allowed to just do anything they felt like. And one of the primary guidelines was that they could not have lists of curriculums. In other words, they couldn't have lists of books that every kid would have to read. What they were after was a set of standards, outcomes in other words. For example, by the end of grade five, 
the kid should be able to do these things in math and a list of things. Now, how they would get to that point, that's up to the states. But the point is that the standards would be the same all over the United States. The Governor's Association adopted the, the Commission's report, told them to go ahead. They hired the subject area experts, and in 2010, the, the core was done. The requirements were done. Now, contrary to what you may have heard, these core requirements only exist in two different subjects. They exist in reading and in math. There are no common core requirements for things like history and science and the arts and so on, and there will never be. Those aren't core subjects. The core subjects are reading. Also, contrary to what you may have heard, there are no specific math problems that the kids need to solve. There are no lists of books that the kids need to read. There are just lists of things that the kids need to do by the end of each grade level. Now, in reading, there is an appendix in the core that offers suggestions and guidance for people looking for books. And in the reading one, for example, it, it mentions things like uh, classic American authors such as Mark Twain and Nathaniel Hawthorne and so on, contemporary American authors like Kurt Vonnegut Jr. and Amy Tan. It says that the kids should be reading the core documents, the American historical core documents like the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. But none of those are required. That's up to the states to decide. The Governor's Association and the school directors, or school superintendents said, looks good to us, they adopted them, and 41 states immediately adopted the core uh, academic standards. Now, in addition to the standards, if you think about it for a minute, if you have a goal, a standard, you have to have a way to find out whether people got to it. And so they said, okay, we need some kind of a testing program. So these 41 states broke into two groups, and about 20 of them are working on what they call no, what do they call that? It's got a trick name that just escaped me a moment ago. It's a court, It's a test that's going to occur at the end of every year. Washington is in that group. The other states are trying to develop a computerized assessment that the kids do as they're going along in the classes. The idea is that after four or five years, they'll compare the results and figure out which one of those assessments works uh, the best. Now, what has happened in the meantime is that somehow this became a political issue. You can find websites that show you lists of books that supposedly the kids have to read. Those are just made up. They don't exist in the Common Core. I would bet any of you any amount of money you cannot find it in the Common Core. You'll find these weird looking math problems and big rants about how, look, they're trying to make math something that's impossible for the parents to help the kids with. Those are just made up. Those don't exist anywhere in the Common Core. I think what happened was that in 2010, when the Governor's Association adopted the Common Core, the Federal Department of Education said, well, we have some grant money, competitive grant money, called Race to the Top, and we will throw that in for states that agree to work on this. And the idea that President Obama is in favor of this caused a lot of people to be against it. That was what it amounts to. And even though the federal government does not own the Common Core, there. They're uh, copyrighted by the Governor's Association, so they can't be altered or used piecemeal. It's all or nothing. And they did that deliberately to stop them from being cannibalized <coughs> like the current standards are. So what this amounts to is there's a description of what the kids should know at the end of each grade level. There will be testing uh, on this, although the tests are still being piloted and whatnot now. And the idea is that if somebody comes to you and wants a job, you should be able to know what that kid did in school. It's as simple as that. There is no socialist agenda or government takeover or anything like that. It's extremely weird to me that this has become an issue in the presidential campaign. Timer, one minute.